pleasure to recognize the gentleman from uh, California, uh, Mr. Cardenas, uh, followed by uh, Mr. Uh, Mark Wayne uh, Mullen of Oklahoma. So you recognize Tony for five minutes. Great to see you. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, and I appreciate uh, you and Ranking Member Guthrie for holding this important hearing. And thank you uh, to all the witnesses for your expertise and opinions today. Uh, we know that lowering prescription drug costs is a priority for our all Americans, and I think that lowering uh, health care costs overall is a priority as well. Uh, even before the pandemic, one in four Americans reportedly reported difficulty affording their medications. Our current economic reality has only made it worse. Uh, as the wealthiest country in the world, the high cost of prescription drugs is unjust and for too uh, long, and uh, it literally has become a matter of life and death in, for many families and many children. No one should be forced to ration or avoid taking medications due to whether or not they can afford it. Uh, this is not what, what Americans or any person deserves. And I'm glad that uh, our committee is working on this solution uh, to address it today. And I hope that we can continue this fight to address the other 90% of costs that Americans are concerned about when it comes to healthcare overall. And as we prioritize affordability for patients and families, it's also important that we ensure research, development, production of existing and new medicines can continue to make it to market so that we can have more cures and more lives saved and also the quality of life of Americans uh, is improved. Uh, Ms. Ball, uh, again, thank you so much for your testimony today and for sharing such a personal story, not only about yourself, but about the people you care for. Can you please expand on what it uh, felt like for you to know this about patients who are rationing their care or can't, who can't afford um, to get the care that they need uh, because of prices and uh, what 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 does it mean to you what it meant to me is that um, not only did i have difficulty with my uh, memory and my physical um, being i also had to stop nursing and that was the love of my life so that was huge it also is what i see is all my um, fellow advocates, people that I have run into in special groups, they are past the point of how, what they can do. Their disease is progressing at a rapid pace and they are not able to get their drugs. I think that we need to look at this, as you have said, that we need to get this bill passed in order for us to save the people in the United States with MS alone. I'm sure it's affecting almost every disease, those that are disabled, and also for the rare diseases. So it is something that needs to be dealt with. You can't imagine the one one point what one point one billion people will will die from the fact that they didn't in the next decade for not receiving their medications. People in the United States should not one depend on charity to get their their drugs, and people in the United States should be able to take care of themselves without having to depend on either charities or do I get my medicine or do I get my groceries? It is imperative that we take this and we take it for the Thank fact you. that it's for all of us. Thank you, Ms. Ball. Um, some bills we're discussing today involve biosimilars, biologics that are similar to other already Food and Drug Administration approved biologic medicines. I believe biosimilars play a role in helping lower prescription drug costs for patients across the board. Uh, that's why I've reintroduced the Increasing Access to Biosimilars Act. By authorizing a Medicare pilot program, this bill would help encourage physicians to prescribe less expensive biosimilars, promoting healthy competition and increasing patient access to life-saving prescription drugs by making it more affordable for them. Professor Sachs, could you please discuss your thoughts on biosimilars and how they could help increase affordability for patients and families? Absolutely, and biosimilars and generic small molecule drugs are a key part of the social bargain that we've made with drug companies, where we give them exclusive rights, patents, and FDA exclusivity periods, but we expect that at some point, competition through biosimilars and generics will enter and increase affordability for patients, increase our system affordability, and drive down prices. And the U.S. has yet to realize the full promise of biosimilar competition. And it is very important to consider bills that would increase biosimilar competition in the U.S. as biosimilar competition in Europe is quite ahead of us by quite some margin. 
Well, one of the things that, that I have a problem comparing us to Europe is that um, the United States uh, invests more money in R&D in this field than they do in Europe. In addition to that, uh, in the United States, we have more talent, thank God. And the reason why we have more talent is because somehow, some way, we've been able to create that environment. Hopefully, uh, the, we don't have a negative effect on that uh, when we're trying to correct this issue of drug pricing in America. Uh, my time has expired. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I yield back. Uh, the gentleman 